Hi, uh, I'm Katie Naughton, and I want to thank Rob for inviting me to read in the Periodicities um, virtual reading series. Um, I'm going to read one short piece from my um, chapbook that Rob put out um, with Above Ground Press earlier this year called Study, uh, and then two poems that are in a poetry manuscript in progress that I'm working on. So this is the first essay from Study. It's called Study. <laughs> it seems the idea comes in a different form every time it comes, each time a new process of letting the outside in and letting the inside out. Um, what follows will be a long quote from Gertrude Stein's narration via Philip Whelan, via Leslie Scalapino's How Phenomena Appear to Unfold. If you exist any day, you are not the same as any other day, no, nor any minute of the day, because you have inside you being existing. Anybody who is existing, and anybody, really anybody, is existing, anybody really is that. But anything happening well, the inside and the outside are not the inside and the outside inside. Let me do that again. The inside and the outside, the outside which is outside and the inside which is inside are not when they are inside and outside are not inside. In short, they are not existing, that is inside. And when the outside is entirely outside, that is, it is not at all inside, then it is not at all inside. And so it is not existing. Do you not see what a newspaper is and perhaps history? It's the end of that quote. If I exist today, I am alone in an apartment I used to live in, waiting to be ready to unfold something. It's the dark end of the year, a time in which I am almost invariably spending inside, straining to stay in thought, trying to continue to feel like I exist. Anybody, really anybody, is existing. Anybody really is that. While the longest night comes, while the rituals of money and bright fabrics, sugar, cocktails, and light unfold around me, and I am trying to go into the darkness alone and come out again, an encounter with darkness, an encounter with light. Let me do that again. I'm trying to put what someone has written inside of me and outside again with something added to it. I'm trying to put something inside of me, outside of me. But anything happening well, the inside and the outside are not the inside and the outside inside. I didn't anticipate the strangeness of coming back to this Manhattan apartment, which still exists as a home for another month, with the same furniture, the same corners and floorboards I've spent hundreds of hours seeing, the same buildings outside across the street, up the slight incline of the street, their lighted windows at night. The school I voted in last year and kids outside every hour. If you exist any day, you are not the same as any other day, no, nor any minute of the day, because you have inside you being existing. I hate leaving places when they stop being existing inside me, when I stop being existing inside them. Of course they keep being existing, and so do I. Some days I don't go outside. New York is an outside city where everyone lives so far from each other and in crappy and small apartments, so you have to leave them, walk to the train, meet someone in a bar or restaurant. People have the money to go out. You get the sense that something might happen when you're out that couldn't happen when you're in. When the outside is entirely outside, that is, it is not at all inside, then it is not at all inside, and so it is not existing. In Buffalo, I feel inside even when I am out. What is the outside? Do you not see what a newspaper is and perhaps history? A long quote from Scalapino's How Phenomena Appear to Unfold. I'm concerned in my own work with the sense that phenomena appear to unfold. What is it or how is it that the viewer sees the impression of history created, created by oneself though it's occurring outside? Multiple perspective in these works in which the viewer and the speaker are within being it's inside the work, allows reality to leak from many holes all around. As spatially infinity is all around one, it creates a perspective that is socially democratic, individual, in the sense of specific and limitless. End of that quote. What I'm trying to do in Buffalo is being existing with and through text. That it feels like nothing is happening most nights is part of the point. Do you not see what a newspaper is and perhaps history? Something is always happening, 
and the distance from investment banks and marketing firms from content creation and public relations is part of the point, the distance and proximity from gallery openings and publishing houses. But it seems right to be in Buffalo, New York's second city, to be inside and outside the power, money, culture of New York. Outside the city and out of money, out of power, watching friends accumulate the benefits of privilege and work I chose not to do, the beautiful bright things, the sense of purpose, the dark close room at the end of the day. Watching friends labor, unrecognized, waking early. Someone always making the world, the glancing angle of sociality off the face of business and law is attractive and threatening. These things are happening in New York, and these things are happening in Buffalo, and these things are happening in writing, and these things are happening in reading. History does not just appear to be created. What is it or how is it that the viewer sees the impression of history created, created by oneself, though it's occurring outside? I put myself in reading. I put you in writing. Multiple perspective in these works in which the viewer and speaker are within being its inside the work allows reality to leak from many holes all around. Um, and I have two poems. I guess I would call what I just read an essay or somewhere between us an essay and a poem. Um, these are, are two poems. Um, from a series I'm working on called Debt Ritual. Um, this first one's called Drift, uh, and that word and its usage owes a debt to Roland Barthes, The Pleasure of the Text, and Lisa Robertson's Time in the Codex. An idea passes over the city, the lake wanting to be with us, the cloud shade of desire, the void blush accumulating on time and its architecture, like other ideas I memorize or which make themselves in me and in which I choose of necessity to live. An idea makes good neighbors a good storm, a good way out for someone. I am way in with someone, hearing their teeth and breathing, hearing the orthographic noises of their thinking. I am way in with the city, the way it isn't going, I am not going with it something layered on the surface, something stupid and intractable about me, a text, a building, someone else, some other time was here of this same hasty ritual and its drift, what gives and what is given back. Um, second one is called Debt Ritual Grain, um, which owes a debt to Roland Barthes, the grain of the voice. These are the only two that, that are Barthes indebted directly. Um, I never wanted money anyway. I wanted texture, which money seems to have. Its own texture, not the texture everything else has. Like you can pay for thoughtfulness that smooths what you want to be smooth and make particular what you want to pay for. To make money life-like, but like life that's money like singled out and beautiful, which makes art a problem confused with money. Me too, it seems, having sought a textural pleasure written into wanting patterns of light and shadow on the faces of people from some other time or place put to film or imagination or memory, coming out of a dark room onto the street in the middle of a work day in an expensive city and believing a way to feel this, the grain in money, as a grain in money my voice, my hand, the lemon, the leather, the light I bought, I wrote to place myself to make a name. Thanks all.